incredible guy, incredible talent, great personality. <laughs> Sorry, what happened, you know, about his death? Because I would love to have seen where he might be today, you know, looking to see what was what his future might have been. Being with some of the guys, I knew that Lee had a problem. So I was always leery. I always watched myself as what things I, I would do with Lee. Because again, my thing was doing a gig and being paid. I wasn't going for no other stuff. I, didn't, I, 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 I couldn't afford that. But it, he was wonderful to work with. I had a good time. He could play. Sidewinder session. <laughs> that song, the groove that you struck at the beginning, just happens, or did Lee say to you any particular instructions on that? Sidewinder it is is weird. We go in, we finish the date, but we need one more tune. Lee goes into the bathroom at Rudy Van Gelder's, and he's in there ten minutes, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes. We're wondering. What is he doing? What's happening? But of course, nobody's saying a word. We're just waiting for him to come and let's do whatever we're going to do for the last tune. Let's do it. He was in the washroom about 20 minutes or more. When he came out, he passed this sheet of music around and it was Sidewinder. Uh, he needed a pickup, he said, Bob. We played the tune down, and he said, play a pickup into the tune. And I guess I'm a bass player a few notes, <laughs> you know. If he needed a long something for the intro, I probably couldn't have come up with it. But I just said, doom, 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 doom. And that was it. Now, I remember the discussion that as we're playing, Barry Harris, it, like I, I think of the combinations of people on the date because if he really, Lee really wanted a funky thing, then somebody like Herbie Hancock, who was more into that type of groove, would have probably been the choice. You know, although these we were the people who were at the date, Barry said, I, I've never forget Barry said when he started, he was going to play as funky as he could play because he was a bebop player. And they were not into the funky style of the Horace Silvers the kind of things that, that maybe the tune called for. So Barry said, man, I'm going to play as funky as I can on it, you know. But he had a feeling that the tune, that there was something there to the tune. He was the first one to say it, you know. And I said, yeah, maybe this is, is really a groove, is really a nice thing. So we started, and, and uh, Lee said, play a pickup. So I played the thing, doom, 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 and we started to play the tune. The tune was very long, it was 13 minutes or 15 minutes long. When we got ready to take, it out, take, take the tune out, 
I would have had to play doom, 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 doom for us to go back into the melody. But I didn't write it down, so I didn't remember what I played at the beginning. And all I could do when we got to that point was to start to laugh, because I forgot it. I had no idea what to play, and we stopped at that point. I mean, I couldn't go any further because I didn't know what I played at the top, you know. And I should have written it down. That was the first thing that I'm aware of because uh, it was very short, so it would have been easy for me to do it. But when you're young, you think you can remember everything, so, you know, you know. Now I would have written it down at the beginning, but at that time I thought that I would remember it and because of the, all of the solos in the length of the tune, I just forgot everything. And we had to go back and play, Rudy played from the top, and then I went in and I punched and doom, 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 and we played the tune out. And I think people really don't know that if you listen to the recording, you'll hear when we get ready, you'll hear just a little, kind of like a little pause, where I guess at that time they had to splice it. Uh, they, they, we splice things, so I hear the splice, you know, or maybe my guilty feeling for I, I hear it or I feel it because I know that I, I didn't do it. But th that was the beginning. Billy Higgins played on the tune. He just played. He made it so easy for me to do what I was doing. And it was groovy enough and funky enough without us selling out to something that we really didn't dig. So it, it was nice. It was, it was great. I, I, I appreciate being a part of, again, a great thing because that helped create a whole genre of funk <laughs> things that are happening still today. That was wonderful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 